Hello, welcome to the worship of First Baptist Church of Los Angeles. This is the worship for January 10th, 2021. Let's open our hearts to God as we pray. We thank you, God, for the blessing of your presence. We pray for your peace in these days. We pray for your kingdom to come, your will be to be done. And in the midst of such chaos and challenges as we face in these times, may we seek you, may we turn to you, gracious God. May we be wise and discerning. We pray that you would bring civility and peace to us in these times and that we would seek after your will. O oh, gracious God, humbly may we worship you. May we seek your will, not our own will. May we indeed be those who seek reconciliation and healing. We pray that in our time that there would be law and order and that there would indeed be a time when people would deeply consider what it means to be people who practice freedom with responsibility. Lord, we pray for healing in the midst of a COVID pandemic, and we pray for the distribution of the vaccine. Oh Lord, in all these things and so much more, we come before you as we are hungry and thirsty for your righteousness. And we pray all this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture today is from Matthew chapter 3, verses 7 to 12. And this is part two in a series on John the Baptist. Listen to the word of God. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Lord, open our heart and our eyes and our minds to your word today and see its application to each of us in these times. Amen. John the Baptist issued a warning. When a warning comes from a prophet, from someone God has sent, someone God has ordained, one must take heed. But the Pharisees and Sadducees, they questioned whether John the Baptist was truly from God, but so many people wanted to hear what he had to say and reported how their hearts were moved and he had an urgent message to, that the kingdom of God was at hand to repent and prepare for God was about to do something. So we see in verse 7 that John the Baptist will issue a warning to these Pharisees and Sadducees who were leaders, religious leaders, the Pharisees, their emphasis was on the temple and its proceedings, the rituals where the Sadducees were more in the line of teaching, education, uh, and policy. A little bit more on the political side. Uh, but each of these groups had amassed power, and they had been in cahoots with the Romans. Now, of course, there were the Zealots, and they were the revolutionaries who who really felt that the Pharisees and Sadducees had sold out. Um, so we have here John the Baptist, uh, who is not a zealot, and he's not uh, one who is, is trying to bring a revolution in that sense. He's preparing people for getting right with God and for the reality that they were occupied and that God may bring his judgment upon the people and they should get ready. Well, let's hear what he, he calls the Pharisees and Sadducees as they came. They came, you know, with their critical vision, with their critical words, with their clipboards, with uh, all the reasons they could try to muster up why John was a bad influence. And so, <laughs> without even saying anything to to John, he sees them coming. Now, how would he see them coming? They dressed a certain way. They wore their t entitlement. And so he sees them and he says, you brood of vipers! He points them out. Now, to everyone who's there knows that they're the religious leaders. He, they're people of great standing. But John doesn't care. He names what is going on. They are a brood of vipers because they have chosen to trust in their own power. They, they are being uh, used by evil. They have allowed the subtle uh, effect of power to, to bring them to a place of abusing their power, thinking too highly of themselves, thinking that they are like God. It wasn't that the temptation of the serpent to Adam and Eve. You can be like God. Well, they kind of acted like they were God. And he warns them. He says, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? What was coming? 
Now in time we know that by 70 AD the obstinance of the people of Israel in relationship to Rome and its power and authority led ultimately to uh, more zealots and more power grabbing and, and eventually the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans. The Romans had had enough. They couldn't deal with it and they finally stopped putting up with the situation and they destroyed Jerusalem. And it was a very awful thing that happened. Uh, was John preparing them for this eventuality? Was he warning them that this could happen? One could guess. But here he's warning them of their pride, of, of how power had corrupted them. And we go on in verse 8. He says, with a word of remedy, there is hope. And when a prophet speaks, he will speak truth to power, but he will also call people to change. He will also call people to do the right thing. Uh, this week, when uh, the Trump supporters took over the Capitol building, uh, the president-elect Joe Biden got on TV and he called President Trump to call the people to peace, to stop the madness. There is a remedy, the remedy of repentance, the remedy of getting things right and not continuing down a path of darkness, not continuing on a path of power mongering. And so he says, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Do the right thing. Uh, repent of, of sin. And you know, probably the Pharisees and the Sadducees thought, what are you talking about? We haven't sinned. You know, we're, we're, we're the hope. They kind of uh, were blinded by their own position. Um, but John offers a remedy. He offers that they can produce fruit in keeping with repentance. If you only but would turn to do the right thing, humble yourselves before God. You know, God can bring about healing. But would they do that? No. At least very few. We go on in uh, verse 9 here. Because John will confront their spiritual delusion and their pride. He says, And do not think you can say to yourselves, Well, we have Abraham as our father. You know, this kind of thinking that, Oh, you know, we're, we're okay because, uh, you know, we're the chosen people. Well, it, the fact is every human being is called to be of faith and become a child of God. Indeed, God had blessed the people of Israel. He had blessed Abraham and his descendants because they had faith. And to be a true child of Abraham is to be a person of faith, not just because you're part of a, an inheritance or a lineage. Indeed, the inheritance of faith is what matters. And they were drawing upon um, a sense of entitlement because of history and culture all of which was very rich and there were a lot of experiences where God had worked, yes, but each person is called to believe and to be right with God and to repent. And he's, John, John the Baptist is, is saying, don't delude yourself with, with this kind of thinking. The fact is every human being can become a child of God. Abraham is the forerunner for us to follow his example of faith, he was not perfect, but by grace God brought him along and God brings us along by his grace if we but would believe and have hope and repent and turn. And John even puts it this way, he says, I tell you that out of these stones God can raise up children for Abraham. Every person, even if their heart is like a stone, if they would just open their heart to God, can become alive and anew and right with God. And, and there's a work of God's grace that can save any person who opens their heart to repent and believe and turn and know the living God. So he confronts the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but he not only will confront them with a warning, and yet also offer the opportunity for repentance. 
he will tell them that there is an impending judgment. Look at verse 10. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Now, what is the axe? Some would say that the axe is Rome. Rome is already there. It's already at the root of the tree. Israel often was referred to as like a tree, the image of a tree, an olive tree. Um, so the image of the tree, or even Jesus in his ministry, noted one time when there was a tree that was not bearing fruit and lots of leaves, but no fruit. Every tree, he said, John the Baptist says, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. God will prune to bring new life. God will discipline those he loves. And if a tree does not produce good fruit, God will try to prune it. Um, we have to see that there ultimately is a judgment. Bearing fruit is essential in life to, and to have life. And with God, we are called to have a relationship of faith. We live at a time that people can pretend to be, and this is not just in our time, people can pretend to be right and righteous and holy and have, be in a movement or in, call themselves Christians, but without the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, patience, peace, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, without that fruit, is that tree where it needs to be in its root, in its tap to goodness, or is it getting a bitter kind of source? We need to be careful that our source be that of God and not the bitterness or corruption or pollution of this world or the delusion of power. So, after warning these Pharisees and Sadducees, he now speaks in a way to everybody. And in verse 11, I baptize you, speaking not only to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but to all who are there. He says, I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes one more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He's talking about Jesus. And he's saying, yes, I'm baptizing you in preparation. Repentance is preparation. Water, baptism, of which John probably practiced, as some think and believe that he was part of the Qumran community, uh, that uh, the Essenes who practiced ceremonial washing as a ritual of purification, uh, John believed in preparing one's heart and repenting. And indeed, Jesus began his ministry saying, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. So he, ful he came to be the fulfillment. He indeed was the one John was speaking about. But here, John is saying, I baptize for repentance so that you will turn to God. I am not the one you discover when you turn. If you turn to God, you will discover the living God. You will come to a relationship with the living God. And if you repent, you will discover the one who is more powerful than I. You will come to know him. John came to prepare, prepare the way for Jesus. He came for the one more powerful than himself. We should always be doing the work of the kingdom, not for ourselves, but for the sake of the one who is the Lord of Lords, King of Kings, the one who is the Savior, the one who is the Lamb, who is worthy to, be, to receive all glory, honor, and praise, Jesus. We are called to come to know him. And John said, I'm not even worthy to, worthy to carry his sandals. I'm not the one you should be looking at. He is the one you will discover. He is the one who will be revealed. And eventually Jesus was revealed as he came to John and he was baptized. We'll talk more about that in another week. But here John is saying, one is coming after me. I'm helping you turn toward God. And as you turn toward God, you will come to know the one who is coming after me. And he is going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now the Holy Spirit 
refers to the gift of God that brings new life. Rec we are reconciled to God through this one who will come for John and his, the people that time, the one who has come, Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Christ, the Messiah. He came to baptize us with the Holy Spirit. When we believe in him, when we confess our sins, repent, and turn toward God and turn to receive Jesus into our heart, by faith we receive not only the forgiveness of our sin, but the Holy Spirit, the deposit of the Holy Spirit, the eternal seed that bears the fruit of the kingdom of God, the eternal seed that is deposited, that, that grows into what we are called to be as children of God. Now, uh, this is being born again. One is born again through faith, not by works, but by faith and by the gift of grace that a person may receive, not earn, but receive. And this is the gift of God through Jesus Christ, the new life, being born again. Um, but he then also talks about the baptism of fire. I ba he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. This is John talking about the eventual judgment that every person will come before God. Now, he gives the example. We know he's talking about judgment because verse 12 talks about the judgment day, the time of judgment that all human beings will eventually face. And he uses the illustration of the uh, threshing floor when the wheat would be harvested and brought in, bringing in the sheaves. Uh, the, the wheat is brought in and then it's brought to the threshing floor and the chaff, which is the stalk and, and, the, and the, the casing around the seed and, and, and all that, that at the threshing floor before the fire of judgment, that is burned. Whereas the, the wheat, uh, is, is, it, it does not go into the fire, but it actually, the wheat drops on the floor and is, is gathered and that survives. The wheat, the seed, the good seed, survives it's refined and it's an image of refinement for salvation so we see a, a matter of judgment to come in this matter of the baptism of fire now i know some people will say well you know isn't the holy spirit uh you know baptism of fire as well um that is one perspective uh but here the holy spirit um you know it's 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 saying holy spirit and fire now you know Depending on how you look at this, you could say the Holy Spirit is is that which you know comes within and ignites the the life of of, the, of a person to be a child of God, and that is part and parcel of also being baptized by fire. But I don't think so in this situation here. This is referring to the baptism of judgment in a way. The, that there eventually is there a, a refinement, a, a time of judgment that will come. And so we see in verse 12, His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Um, here we see that uh, Jesus is the one who is doing this work of ultimate judgment. His winnowing fork is in his hand. He's separating the sheep from the goats. He's separating the wheat from the chaff. And he will clear the threshing floor when all is said and done. The wheat to be saved and the chaff to be burned. He will gather the wheat into his barn and burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. It will be as if that was no more. And he saves that which is good. This is something all of us should prepare for. This is a warning and a foretelling. And in our time, we are called to live in a way that's in keeping with the fruit of the Spirit. And it's sad to see that so many people are being deluded and misled and choosing to be led, and choosing to go in a way that is divisive and destructive, in a way that's con contradictive 
to the fruit of the Spirit that's not in keeping with the fruit of the Spirit. We are called to humble ourselves before God and to seek God and to serve God and to serve and care for one another, to love our neighbor as ourselves. This is a time to do this. And difficulty is when people are called to love God and love one another more deeply, not be more deeply divided. Such a time is upon us. We are warned and we are foretold that there will be a judgment day. Jesus will come again. The question is, how are we to live now? We are called to be his representatives now. In conclusion, John the Baptist came warning people who thought they were spiritually superior. We must be careful not to exalt ourselves, but instead humble ourselves before God. In the times we live in, we must heed the warnings of injustice, a fragile earth ecology, a raging deadly pandemic, the delusions of deceptive political leaders who would advance their cult over democracy and freedom. We live in a fragile, broken, and tentative time. It is imperative to take heed to the warning signs that indicate we must prepare for the work of God in the second coming of Jesus, but live now in the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, and self-control. Today is the day to heed the warnings and engage in the ministry of reconciliation, healing, and new life. Let's pray. God, we pray for your healing in these times. May we seek your face and learn to love one another as you have so loved us. Help us, gracious God, to heed the warning as well as to look to do the work of your kingdom. We pray this gracious God in your name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and give you peace. And may his promise 
of salvation and hope and redemption, his kingdom live within you. May the Holy Spirit come within you as you believe and trust in him, as you believe in the one who was sent so that you could turn toward God and in turning toward God you can come to see that it is Jesus that God has sent. May God bless you. May Jesus bless you. May life in the Spirit be yours and may hope eternal blossom within your soul. In Jesus' name we pray. God's peace. Amen.